Well, let's just get right into it. Today, we're going to go over the basic OB ultrasound for uh, second trimester, 18 to 20 weeks. You want to begin in the lower uterine segment of the scan to, to see the cervix, see uh, whether the cervix is the correct length. Uh, cervix usually above 3 to 3.5 centimeters is normal. You want to make sure that there's no cervical incompetence or that the cervix is not shortened or there's funneling of the amniotic membranes into the cervical canal. Um, a pitfall here would be a, a extremely filled bladder, which can cause uh, elongation of the cervix, false elongation of the cervix, and can mask a cervical incompetence. Uh, another pitfall here would be um, a concentric lower uterine segment focal myometrial contraction, which can cause a funneling appearance, but you'll still have normal cervical length. If there's any doubt for cervical incompetence, you have to do a transvaginal ultrasound to, um, to confirm that. Um, secondly, you want to see the placental lie, see whether it's previa or if it's posterior, fundal, low-lying, marginal. And you also want to see the presentation of the baby, whether it's vertex or cephalic, breech, transverse, you know, one of those variations. Once you're done with that, you want to begin the brain or the fetal head. And you're going to want to continue in a head-to-toe fashion. You're going to take four measurements of the fetus. And these measurements will help you determine the estimated fetal weight and the estimated gestational age. Beginning with the head, you're going to get a transverse view at the level of the thalamus, cori plexus, and the cavum septum pellucidum. The first measurement you're going to take is a biparietal diameter measurement. At that level, you want to put the calipers from the outer cranium to the inner cranium. Once you finish that measurement, you're going to want to take a head circumference. So putting the calipers in the anterior and posterior portions or occipital frontal areas of the head in the same, in the same view, you're going to want to open the ellipse and measure the circumference. Next, you want to look at the intracranial anatomy, or the brain tissue. You want to look at things like the cavum septum pellucidum again, the lateral ventricles. You want to measure the lateral ventricles from inner to inner. You want to look at the choroid plexus, the corpus callosum, the cerebellum, cisterna magna. Looking at the intracranial anatomy, you can rule out things like hydrocephalus, a genesis of the corpus callosum, hollow prosencephaly, cerebellar issues, dandy walker malformations. Uh, you can see the banana sign, which to, along with the lemon sign can be indicative of spina bifida, schizencephaly, many, many things. A transverse view of the eye can give you the intraocular distance. It can give you uh, hints as to whether they have hypo or hypertellerism. Focusing on the eyes, you can see fetal movements like the lens moving side to side or around. You can also see blinking if you're in a coronal view. Next, you want to look at the face in a profile view. A profile view would be good to rule out facial anomalies. You can see the nasal bone. You can also see the sagittal cerebral structures like the corpus callosum. A coronal face view is important for ruling out facial anomalies like cleft lip. You could also rule out things like a proboscis, check the, the fetal nose. In a coronal view, sometimes you may, with color Doppler on, maybe even able to see fetal breathing, which is important. On a sagittal view, if you go to any of the lateral extremes, you'll be able to see fetal ears. From here, you may travel down to the neck. Um, this is a good spot, especially in transverse, to rule out a nuchal cord. You will see the cord around the neck, but with color Doppler, it will be a lot more easier to see. A transverse view in the neck or posterior fossa is also a good place to measure the nuchal fold. The nuchal fold is a soft marker for chromosomal anomalies like Down syndrome. You may also see a cystic hygroma, which is a lymphatic malformation of the cervical region. From here, you may travel down into the chest. In the chest, you'll be able to see the fetal lungs, which are echogenic bilaterally. Um, good spot to rule out things like pleural effusion, cystic adenomatoid malformation, 
or a pulmonary hypoplasia. In a coronal view, you may see the diaphragm and check for fetal breathing and also rule out things like diaphragmatic hernia. Next, you may go to the fetal heart and get the very famous four chamber view, which shows the both ventricles and atria. The fetal heart usually lies at a 45, approximately 45 degree angle in the chest to the left. A transverse view will show the two lungs, the spine, and the heart with its angle to the left. It is sometimes normal to see a tiny bit of pericardial fluid, usually under two millimeters. At the four chamber level, you may rule out things like ventricular septal defect or atrial septal defect. You may apply M mode at this level to get the fetal heart rate and rule out things like fetal tachycardia, fetal arrhythmia. If you go sagittal at the fetal heart, you can also see the aortic arch. From here, you may proceed to do the upper extremities or the spine. If you do the upper extremities first, or spine, really doesn't matter. Um, the upper extremities, you got to make sure you get the humerus, radius, and ulna, and the hand showing all the fingers. Once you go to the spine, you would want to take some sagittal images of the cervical, thoracic, lumbar, and sacral spine. Also, you can get coronal views and transverse views. You can rule out things like spina bifida at the spine. At the sacral region, you can rule out things like sacral coccygeal teratoma. Next up is the abdomen. In the abdomen, you have your third measurement, which is the abdominal circumference. You, um, you can also do a coronal view of the fetal thorax and fetal abdomen and get the heart, bladder, stomach view. You can rule out things like heterotaxy or situs inversus. What's your transverse on the abdomen? Above the level of the cord insertion, you want to get the umbilical vein becoming the portal vein, which forms a J-like shape, the spine, and the liver and stomach. Here you can measure the abdominal circumference. While you're in the abdomen, you can also see the fetal kidneys, both in transverse on either side of the spine and in sagittal, parasagittal to the spine. In the kidneys, you can see things like cyst or hydronephrosis, a tiny bit of fluid within the pelvis is considered normal and usually goes away by the third trimester. In some cases they have fetal pyelectasis that continues on into the third trimester. If it's uh, greater than seven, they may get a you know, postnatal ultrasound. You could also see things like renoagenesis. If you're having trouble seeing the kidneys, you could always do a coronal view of the aorta showing the bilateral renal arteries with color Doppler on. If there is renoagenesis, one of the renal arteries will not show. Next, you can look at the cord insertion of the umbilical cord. The umbilical cord usually has three vessels, two arteries, one vein. Once the cord enters the abdomen, the two arteries go down into the iliac arteries and the one umbilical vein goes up into the liver, becoming the portal vein and also shunting to the IVC with the ductus venosus. At this level, you can rule out things like omphalocele, if there's gas, uh, stomach contents protruding into the base of the umbilical cord. So abdominal wall defect, another abdominal wall defect, which is usually lateral to the cord insertion, gastroschisis, you can also see that. Below this level, you can see the urinary bladder. The urinary bladder fills about every 30 minutes in a fetus. With color Doppler on, you can see the two umbilical arteries wrapping around the bladder, going down into the iliac arteries. You can rule out things like bladder extrophy, or a keyhole bladder can rule out things like posterior urethral valves. You can see the bladder emptying as you're scanning as well. And if you're lucky enough, you can actually catch urine coming out of the genital, especially if it's a male with Doppler on. You'll see it like a ureteral jet kind of. Around this area, you can also see the sex of the, of the fetus. Earlier on, it can be a little difficult to determine the sex. You'll see three lines for a female and what some call the turtle sign for a male. As they get older, especially towards 20 weeks and 25 and 30 weeks, it becomes much easier and the male genitalia becomes very easy to see. You see a penis, obviously, uh, the testicles. Going into the lower extremities, your first stop would be at the femur. Here you can measure the femur length, which is your last measurement for a 
general, second trimester OB ultrasound. You want to also make sure that there's bilateral femurs, bilateral tibias and fibulas. You want to see the feet, see all the digits in the feet. In the feet, you can see things like sandal gap or rocker bottom feet, which are also markers for fetal anomalies or trisomies. You can also rule out club foot. Once you're done with your fetal exam, you can continue on to the amniotic fluid. Uh, the amniotic fluid can be a completely anechoic or can sometimes have uh, echogenicities called vernix. You want to measure the amniotic fluid and take in what's called an amniotic fluid index. You want to divide the uterus into four quadrants and measure the largest pocket, largest vertical pocket in each quadrant, excluding any fetal parts or cord and the sum of those four quadrants gives you your amniotic fluid index. You could also look at the, within the amniotic fluid, the umbilical cord, Col put colored Doppler on it to, sh to show the vascularity, get a transverse view to show the three vesicle cord. After that, you can assess the, the placenta again. At the beginning, you, I told you to look whether it was uh, posterior or fundal, anterior, or whether it was previa. You want to look at the placenta and see if there's anything like placental lakes or any masses of the placenta. See where the placental insertion is for the cord. And you want to also grade the placenta from 0 to 3. I forgot to mention, uh, increased amniotic fluid index is called polyhydramnios and decreased amniotic fluid is called oligohydramnios. Well, I hope I covered as much as possible for this basic OB second trimester exam in this short time. I'm pretty sure there's much more videos out there that are more in depth, but this is kind of like for, you know, beginners or those who want to start doing OB scans. Uh, thanks for listening. Uh, and as always, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, the YouTube channel. Uh, this will be on Facebook as well and on Instagram uh, under Practical Sonography. The page is Sonographic Tendencies. This is Henry. Take care.